Hey, welcome everyone. This video I'm going to teach you three ways to get Android Auto. And two of those methods will work for people where their cars do not natively support Android Auto. Because just because you have a touchscreen panel in your car doesn't mean it will support Android Auto. Uh, so I'll teach you two other ways to get it done. So Android Auto in a nutshell is basically a hands-free system designed by Google uh, based on Android, of course, and allows you to access certain apps while driving safely. And a lot of it is powered through Google Assistant. Um, a lot of it works very well with Google Assistant, does a fantastic job. But I have another video explaining and showing how Android Auto works. A link to that is in the video description. So sticking with this video, we'll stick with the three methods to get Android Auto. So the first is, like I said, if your car natively supports Android Auto. So this really depends on the vehicle make and model. Some manufacturers will support it, some will not. If you're not sure if your car supports it or not, and it has a USB port for connecting your phone, give it a shot, see what happens. Or you can always just Google it, you know, see if your make and model does support it or not. The key thing about this though, is that there's two ways to get it connected if your car supports it. And the first method is using a USB cable. So in my instance, I have to connect a USB cable to my cell phone and then Android Auto will appear on my touchscreen in my car. Some other vehicles can allow Android Auto to work wirelessly. It's kind of over Bluetooth connectivity, but there's certain conditions on that. Your cell phone for starters has to support Android Auto wireless connectivity, and then your car also has to support it. So there's two conditions. The best way to find out if that'll work or not based on your cell phone and your car is to just try it out maybe one day. So here's the thing about Android Auto. Some people say it works pretty finicky and others like myself will say it works fantastic, but that purely depends on the car and the manufacturer, not Android Auto. There's nothing wrong with Android Auto. It depends on the car manufacturer. So my suggestion is that if you're in the market to buy a new car, Test out Android Auto. If it has it built in, connect your phone, test it out, see what it's like. That's what I did when I purchased my car. And I just wanna take a moment to say something really serious. Please just hear me out and then we'll resume the rest of this video. I cannot emphasize this enough. Please be safe on the road. Don't text and drive and don't call and drive by holding the cell phone in your hand and driving with one hand. Think of it this way. Chances are your cell phone contract is two to three years long. And most likely you're gonna get a new phone when you sign up for a new contract. Over those two, three years, you're gonna end up spending thousands on your monthly cell phone bill and your new cell phone device. Just take the time to spend like $20 on a Bluetooth receiver if your car doesn't have Bluetooth built into it already. And if you need to send a message, since we're focusing on Android Auto in this video, we'll stick to Google Assistant. Just use the voice command to tell Google Assistant, you know, Google, text, blah, 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 contact name, this message and just say the message out loud and Google will confirm it for you and it does a fantastic job. Basically what I'm trying to say is, don't be stupid, just be safe on the road. The second method to get Android Auto up and running is to just use the app on your cell phone. If your car doesn't support it, just download the app on Google Play Store uh, or iOS on the App Store and just load up the app and there you go. Your cell phone is now your Android Auto hub. If you have a car dock, just mount it and you're good to go. I will admit it's not as cool of an experience as it is having it natively built in your car, but it does the job. It still accomplishes safe, hands-free driving. Now the last way to get Android Auto up and running while you're driving is to purchase the receiver. You can simply Google search Android Auto receiver. You'll see a whole bunch of results. Basically, it's a console that you'll have to purchase and install physically into your car with a screen that comes up. It's a touch screen panel and it will allow you to connect your cell phone and start using Android Auto. But there are a lot of caveats to using this method. The first problem is the price. The unit itself can be pretty expensive, several hundred dollars depending on where you live and how good or bad the currency is in your country. Like here in Canada, it's pretty expensive. The other thing is that you then have to most likely pay someone to install it for you because chances are if you're like me, you wouldn't know what to do. You're gonna have to hire a professional to install it into your car, which is gonna cost you even more money. The last problem, it also depends on your car, is some cars are designed so bizarre. The, the audio console, it might not even physically fit. It might not even be physically possible to put it in there. I've seen some really wonky designs in, in my time, and unfortunately that is the case. It might not be possible. So that's pretty much a wrap from me. Again, if you wanna see Android Auto in action, be sure to check out that video. The link is in the video description. And that's the three ways to get Android Auto while you're driving. And please, please, please drive safe.